keeping the roof up. Every sports team wants an impressive stadium to play in, and that often means pushing the engineering and construction envelope. But the trouble with ambitious design is that sometimes it can have its downsides, as in fully downsides. In 2008, a new stadium opened in Kuala Terengganu, Malaysia. The $82 million Sultan Mizan Zainal Abidin Stadium was one of the most prestigious construction projects in Malaysia's history. The stadium's most striking feature was its roof. And don't forget, this is in a country famous for scorching sunshine, but also it has 200 days of rain a year. So the roof was an essential part of the design. And while all of this looked great on paper, in practice, it turned out to be a monumental blunder because it wasn't long before the roof collapsed spectacularly. And not once, but twice. The same hotel. The same room. Stadium. Now, when the news of its roof collapsing first came out in 2009, everyone was so shocked and surprised. So, to have it happen second time just a few years later, well, that was just really embarrassing. So, for the longest time, I've been wondering what actually went wrong. The 50,000 seater stadium was the pride of Terengganu State and even hosted the 2008 Malaysia Games. But just a year later, catastrophe struck. Two thirds of the 300 meter long roof collapsed. All right, Justin, I'm on foot now. It's almost as if someone took a saw and just sort of like halved it and removed the entire top off. <coughs> Officials are reluctant to discuss it, so Hansen's tracked down a local journalist who saw the destruction firsthand. Okay, Justin, I'm joined by Mr. Mari. He's one of the first few reporters who arrived on the scene. So, what caused it? It was kan terpasok rekabentuk bumbung yang tidak membadagi untuk menyokong bumbung stadion dan juga satu jajaran. Maknanya bumbu itu tidak mengikut jajaran geometri yang sebenarnya. Right, okay. So a design error was partly to blame for the collapse, but that wasn't the only blunder. An official report also pointed the finger at poor construction. A bad combination for the way this roof design works. Like many self-supporting structures, this stadium roof was held up by nothing more than a space frame. And this is a really common technique used throughout the engineering world. And it's basically made up of a series of triangles that are interlocked together to make up some sort of framework. And the reason they do this is it's really strong and really rigid. But the trouble with this sort of design is all you need to do is remove or weaken a couple of the triangles and the whole thing becomes weakened. And if you imagine this is happening to the Malaysia Stadium, well, it's catastrophe, isn't it? The trouble is the stadium space frame roof was anchored onto individual concrete beams which were too weak to support it. Add to that, builders who didn't weld the triangular sections of the space frame together properly and bang, the whole caboodle comes crashing down. If it had happened on a match day, it would have been a catastrophe for fans like Ami and his friends. Bila you sudah tahu macam mana anda rasa? Oh, very. Saya rasa kejut lah. Uh, rasa kita nak menyangka yang stadium yang baru di Pinya. Pembas. Stadium tu pun nak pakai pun lagu dia kali. Lepas umat. Tu dia tu. Rasa macam terpilang lah. But that's not all. In 2013, workers were well into the stadium repairs when disaster. The roof collapsed for a second time. This time, the builders hadn't installed strong enough supports to carry the roof's weight. 
to the local football team supporters, will be forced to watch their team in the open air. Hansen's off to check out a far more successful stadium room to test just how much difference a bit of shade can make. Hey Justin, I'm back in Kuala Lumpur and I'm making my way to the Shalom Stadium. Well, it's because after looking at the stadium in Trungan, I feel like I have to prove to you that Malaysia is capable of building state-of-the-art stadiums. When the 80,000-seater Sharanam Stadium was opened in 1994, it boasted the longest freestanding arched roof in the world. Oh, wow. Look at the stadium. You might be wondering, hey, what's the big deal, right? A stadium with a roof or no roof? Well, in our climate, which is hot and humid all year round, it actually makes a big difference when you're not under the shade. So the pitch is actually not shaded, and we're going to take a temperature and have a look. 38.7. Pretty hot, huh? Now, let's go find out what the temperature is like when we're under the shade. Come on. Shows you 32.8. Quite a big difference. That's a six degree difference on a cloudy day. When it's sunny, the spectators under the roof can be up to 10 degrees cooler than those outside. So just in there goes to show the roof is actually essential if you want to stay away from the heat and enjoy the game. To find out what's holding this roof securely in place, Hansen's meeting architect Serena Hijas. How does it hold itself up? Well, what you see on the roof here is predominantly a space stream structure that's uh, arching from one end to the other. There's about 74 of these ribs that go across. Uh -huh. They are actually working structurally also in tandem, yeah, in tandem with the space ring, and it basically makes it a lot stiffer. The Shah Alam Stadium roof has a space frame structure just like the stadium at Terengganu. Except here, the steel space frame is anchored into sturdy concrete and stiffened by a series of ribs. This record-breaking roof isn't going anywhere and proves you need both good design and excellent construction. So there you have it, Justin. I really like this space. The stadium really needs a roof in our climate. I mean, it's hot, it's rainy all the time. So, I don't know. I do hope that they reconsider at some point to build a roof for the stadium in Trungaru. But I think my duty is done here.